Well, um, first off, um, thank you so much for having us um, here to present. Um, so I'm gonna be presenting uh, with Stacy um, about our uh, Love Local PC campaign. So I think the, um, the very first part um, of a successful um, campaign is always to find a partnership that works. Um, and I'm so lucky to have a great partnership with our, our Chamber of Commerce and um, with, with Stacy. So um, I'm Marie Everts, I'm the Marketing Events and Economic Development Officer for the Town of Pincher Creek. Um, and I've been a member of EDA, I think for almost seven years now. So I'm very pleased and I'm gonna let Stacy go ahead and introduce herself. Hello, everyone. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm Stacey Benson. I am the new chamber manager for the Pincher Creek and District Chamber of Commerce. Um, I was born and raised in neighboring Crow's Nest Pass and spent a little bit of time out in Vancouver for a number of years as well as Lathbridge. So my background is I've got a theater background, a film background, and a little bit of medical office administration. And we got brought back to Pincher recently. I like to consider us as some of Pincher Creek's newest residents. Um, and it's been great for us because we've got family out here and um, you know we love to fly fish and camp. So it's, it's just been a great marriage to be out this way and was introduced to Marie. So Marie hooked me up with a chamber manager role, which I have such a strong sense of community and a passion for, for connecting people that it's just been such a fit. And I've been really excited to work with her in the chamber. And as you guys can see in our pictures, we became fast friends um, through uh, having fun, making fun of ourselves. So that's been a great partnership so far. So why um, love locals? So um, when, of course, the pandemic hit, um, we really um, wanted to do the best that we could um, for our community and supporting our businesses through um, the pandemic. And of course, there's so many great shop local programs um, out in Alberta and, and, the, and in the greater area we can look at, but we wanted to do a little bit more than just um, shopping local. We really wanted to start thinking about local um, and we wanted to start um, our community members thinking about local first and where could they get that locally um, and building community um, thinkers that are wanting to share products, um, the locations that they're shopping, um, events and stories and more. So we came up with um, two programs that we tied together with a hashtag. Now for you guys that know where Pincher Creek is, we're pretty south, pretty rural um, Southern Alberta. Um, and so a hashtag, a lot of people were like, well, what is that? I don't even know what that is. So we, um, our two programs um, tied together and our first program, which I'm gonna talk about um, is the hashtag campaign. And Stacey's gonna follow up with the, our more traditional um, passport um, campaign that followed. So our hashtag love local PC campaign um, it was fairly, um, I thought fairly simple for our community. The goals um, and the directions to the community was to shop local um, in the town, um, in our municipal district um, and all of the villages um, that are in those surrounding area. We wanted people to take a picture of the product or event or experience that they are, um, that they were partaking in um, and post it on social media using the hashtag love local PC. And then, of course, following um, the Pincher Chamber Facebook to see if they were a winner. So every week um, we entered um, anyone that had uh, used the hashtag into um, a prize contest to win $200 of local um, vouchers um, or uh, gift certificates every week. And on top of that, every time that they entered, they were also entered to win $1,000 um, at the end of the, um, the summer contest um, to celebrate Small Business Week and uh, they can win $1,000. Of course, we encourage them to enter as many times as they, um, they wanted. And the more posts um, that they had, the more entries that they um, were able to submit. So what did we get? Um, you know, when you kind of put together a campaign like this, you don't necessarily know what you're going to get. We got everything from um, date nights at the local car wash, which who knew that was actually a thing um, that you do in Pincher Creek. Um, so I definitely learned that. We got people who were repairing their doors from our local glass shop um, to going to um, our local mechanics. We got um, picnic ideas on where to go, grocery 
shopping. And then of course, we also got people encouraging others to partake in events. So um, some of my most favorite parts of this was that once these um, pictures and posts started to showing up on other people's social media, of course, um, the comments started saying, well, I didn't know you could get that in Pincher Creek or where is that store? Or can I come and partake in that event with you next time? Cause that looks really fun. And so not only were we seeing our community um, participating and showcasing, they were also creating content um, themselves for some of our local businesses. So our savvy business owners were able to go, oh man, you know, Ashley just shopped at the Pinter Creek Co-op today. I don't have to create my own social media content because Ashley just created it for me. And they were able to share some of that. So we were um, affecting our local residents, but also helping our businesses through this. One of the um, important parts of the campaign for us as well is that when people were entering into win and um, and we started to announce the winners, we um, wanted to make sure that the $200 gift certificates were purchased um, and not donated. So a lot of the shop local campaigns that we see um, ask the businesses to you know, throw something in the pot and say, um, you know, donate this. Our concept behind it was you know, to create commerce. And so we really wanted to be able to do that. And we were able to do that um, because of the support um, of our community and some funding that we had. So every week, we, um, as I said, we drew a winner um, and we announced the winners um, live on Facebook. I have never done so many Facebook lives. Um, we ran this program for, for two summers um, and it was a absolute massive commitment to attending the farmer's market every week, um, which was great when I got to do my farmer's market shopping, um, but I also got to showcase our farmer's market weekly. Um, I chose a random maker grower baker um, to help me announce um, who the winner was. And we used the old method of pulling the names out of a hat, which was great. Um, and of course we announced um, the winner and then also where they shopped at. So we were able to highlight some of the businesses. Um, for example, a, a cool one this past summer was um, one of our local farmers um, has started um, selling garlic. Um, and so um, the person that won um, purchased local garlic. And then all of a sudden there was a lot of conversation about, well, who is this local garlic grower? I didn't know that we could get garlic here in Pincher. Um, so those were um, some of the pieces that, you know, were definitely those wins that we didn't necessarily expect, but really, really came out. So as I said, we ran the program um, in 2020 and 2021. Um, so we started actually the first um, farmer's market and ran all the way through to Small Business Week um, with the idea of the campaign ending on Small Business Week to really, really showcase um, and just celebrate um, those small business um, pieces. One of the things that we learned um, from one year to the next is that we really wanted to make sure we kind of had a little, little bit more um, measure coming back for what was spent locally. Um, and that's still a piece that um, we continue to work on, on trying to figure out, you know, if someone posts a car wash, um, you know, how, how can we gauge how much that local spend was using this hashtag campaign? Um, so that's definitely, as I said, a learning and something that we'll move forward with. But um, in our winter campaign, which I'm gonna turn over um, for Stacy to um, talk through, we found a really great way to do that. Yeah, so Holiday Passport, um, that launched in November 19th and it runs all the way through till January 2nd. Um, and how that works in a nutshell is uh, we've got 35 local participating businesses um, and they're all equipped. We've, we've dropped them off with a bunch of passports and all the, all the, the tools that they need um, to run the campaign. And, and we sort of, I feel like a little elf delivering here and there as, as they need more product, we show up with more product. If they've got passports that need to be picked up, we go pick those up as well. Um, but anyways, uh, residents are able to go in and get a passport from one of those participating businesses. And for every $10 that is spent locally um, at any one of those businesses, they're getting a stamp. And once their passport is fully filled, then they're putting that passport in to enter a grand prize draw. Um, and unlike the summer program, um, we do have the businesses donating the gift card for this time around so it's a little bit different um, but everyone's usually happy to donate a, a gift card or a gift um, of a certain retail value for the campaign and then we do uh, big draws on January 10th once the passports have all been finally counted. Um, the, the thing with this too is it's measurable so um, businesses have to be 
a chamber member to sign up. And so the nice thing about that is that like I was warned when I got the job that um, the holiday campaign was going to be huge and my phone blew up. So I had, I want to say eight, eight businesses that were either new to sign up as a chamber member um, or reactivating their membership just to partake in this program. And six of those businesses were brand new to town. So to be able to highlight those businesses and not only incentivize them to um, join the campaign, but then give them the added benefits of being a chamber member was really cool. Um, and being able to go around and meeting all of the, the people, the business owners um, that are part, a part of these businesses has been good for me as a new manager to get to know everyone and network as well. Um, so with every $10 being spent and then we're taking a stamp for that, we're also able to count the cards, see, you know, a good dollar amount, a good statistic of how much is being spent at these businesses. Um, and at the end of the day, get some really good stats like you saw in a couple of the previous slides. Um, and we're also, we're also doing a lot of this via social media, which is great too. And we're encouraging the businesses to uh, promote each other and be kind. So just getting conversation flowing social media wise is great, especially with the way things have been over the last couple of years. Um, and for myself, personally just to see the business and the residents reaction to a campaign like this is really exciting they absolutely love partaking in this it's a it's they're jacked <laughs> Um, and so with what I've heard from last year and what we've seen, uh, like in the post here, the success of this campaign has been so, um, so, ex so exciting that, uh, you know, last year they got to wrap up and talk to Global News, which I think was really heartwarming for a lot of our local businesses and the community as a whole. So um, just really warms, warms the heart and makes it makes it something that I know I want to blow up this year, make it bigger than last year and make sustainable for years to come. So uh, makes you proud to be pincher, which maybe that's a new hashtag, but. <laughs> so um, I also just wanted to mention um, as we wrap this up that this um, Love Local campaign was part of a bigger project, which is our business recovery support program. Um, and in March, 2020, um, the our town council um, recognized um, that it was, there, there was going to be some businesses that were going to need support um, through COVID, and uh, we were really lucky um, to be working with Natalie from Innovisions um, on a community economic development strategy, um, and we were able to jump into action and uh, put together a local business recovery support program. Um, and you'll see on the slide there it says "Bob, me, Bob." You know, Bob helps Pincher Creek business. Um, it was very uh, a very grassroots program. Um, that uh, we were able to have one-on-one -on -one conversations um, with businesses and really kind of almost go back to those days of sitting across the kitchen table, um, you know, when uh, with someone and really having having a one-on-one -on -one conversation. So um, we're just wrapping up our phase one and phase two of our business recovery program so that we can move into um, our phase three. Um, and we've meet, we've really um, seen so many great successes um, in our business community um, and also really strengthen the partnership between the town and the chamber, um, which has um, had so many great wins. Um, and uh, the engagement from the community has been great. Um, and one of the really um, interesting things is that our community has been participating in business recovery through the use of the Love Local PC campaigns, but they didn't even know that they were doing it, most of them. And so um, that participation is a success and a win for us. And that's all we've got for you guys today, um, other than um, if anyone has any questions about anything. That is great. Thank you so much, Marie and Stacey. Uh, it's great to see some successes like this, and I'm sure it's make, made a big impact for, for many people and their families. Um, Nancy, uh, you've been kind of moderating the chat. Is there, has there been any questions or so far? I don't see anything so far. What questions does everybody have? And any questions? Raise your hand or just unmute yourself, feel free. Hi, thank you for this presentation. Such great information. And I love the whole Love Local uh, campaign. I have the, uh, I had to look at, and was looking up your hashtag on Twitter and Facebook while you were presenting. Um, if you look back on the program, is there anything you would have done differently uh, knowing what you know now? I think um, with the hashtag cam campaign itself, um, Facebook um, doesn't really like the use of hashtags for trackability.
money. Um, and so as we moved into year two, um, it became quite cumbersome to be able to track that. Um, so I would uh, if we move it forward again, I would recommend that we use the hashtag and also tag um, to the pages that we're using so that we can use that as a, as a measure and, a, and a, a pulling tactic. Instagram is great for hashtags. Um, you can use them, you can sort them by most recent and the same with Twitter. Um, it's just Facebook that really doesn't like that. So that's, that's probably the biggest part that we would do a little bit differently. And that's because of the time it takes to go through the hashtags on Facebook. Um, at the end of the campaign, it was taking um, a, about an hour a week just to scroll through Facebook, which was feeling a bit rough. Maria, I have a question. If other communities wanted to adopt something similar, what would be the best piece of advice you could give? Hmm, great question, Nancy. Um, I think finding, as with all, all programs, right, finding the right partners is so important. Um, and then also um, having the champions that understand um, what a hashtag is and can explain it. Um, I didn't realize how much time I would um, spend explaining the hashtag. Um, but once the community got it, I mean, the people that were using the hashtag correctly, and I'm talking about all ages and generations. Um, and so it was really, really neat to see that progress. And I think ultimately that's helped our business community with some of their social media marketing. And so again, that outcome. So um, yeah, I'd say just do it. Call other communities and ask them what they did. Give me a shout or Stacy a shout and um, ask me all the questions so that you can just learn from what we did. Um, yeah, because sure. it seems really easily transferable. You know, it uh, it seems like it would be a, it could be adopted by lots of communities. Hundred percent. And come come just coming into it halfway through, I started at the end of the you know the summer campaign and and sort of got thrown into some lives and thrown into what was going on and how it was managed. Um, and that was something that was interesting to get to be a part of. But um, I can't really speak so much for last year, but going into this year too, I know with the holiday passport campaign, um, a change that we made from last year is the we've got no limit this year, right, Marie? So last year I think there was a limit to what you could spend as far as um, your passports this year there's no limit so I'm very interested to see um, how that changes the amount of passports that we get back as well. I love that Beth just uh, acknowledged Marie as the uh, EDA Outstanding Young Professional 2021. Yay Marie and thanks Beth. <laughs> thanks for that Bev. such a wonderful cheerleader. Great call out. Um, was the Chamber able to access the Alberta Chambers of Commerce Shop Local funding? to support some of this work? Do you know? Not this, This I don't think this is something that we've done with their their shop local funding. Correct me if I'm wrong, Marie. I think we're just a little late to the party on that. Yeah, it was an existing campaign. Um, so yeah. we would we'll need to make some adjustments to use that funding if, uh, if applicable in the future. Shucks, but great work. I know, I'm in the middle of learning about that as well, right in the middle of learning about that funding and what it has to offer and, and how we can use it too in the future. If, if you want to talk the uh, Kenmore uh, Bow Valley Chamber of Commerce, uh, you got 40,000 through that program. So you can talk to Pauline. I'm sure she'd be happy to share how that works for her. <laughs> I'd love to. Yeah, congrats, congrats on your program. Uh, it's very, very interesting. I was just wondering if you had any insight on like the amount of prizes you gave out. Like I really, it's, it seemed like you had a lot of smaller increment prizes, which then could lead to more promotion of the businesses I know in some of the places in my community here, they have one big grand prize of 3000. So literally somebody wins $3,000 in gift cards from multiple businesses, which seems like a lot. Any comments around that? Yeah, so we did um, for the hashtag campaign, it's $200 weekly. Um, and the winner gets, uh, gets to choose choose where they want their um, gift certificates from. And we allowed a, a split of two gift cards. Um, so they get two, uh, two $100 gift cards or one 200. Um, and we had a real large variety of uh, places that um, people chose. So everything from grocery stores um, to um, eyeglass um, retailers through to, um, I think someone had their garage door replaced and a vet clinic, um, they got their dog neutered, which was quite a funny social media post um, 
later as wow. well, which was good. Oh, um, and then the thousand dollar prize at the end of it. So all of those people were able to do the thousand dollars at the end. And we didn't put a restriction on um, the number of gift cards. So if they wanted to do $10 gift cards, we would have let them do that. But Stacy, remind me what we ended up with. Yeah, it was, uh, we split it, I think, seven ways, seven ways for that thousand dollars. And she did a good job. <laughs> Nice. And those went the the split has to be over the participating businesses or chamber members or not necessarily. Yeah, so for the hashtag campaign, um, you had to be a chamber member. Um, now, um, really important to note that our chamber board um, only charge has charged fifteen dollar chamber memberships for the last two years, so that the chamber has been accessible to our entire community. Um, and those that are involved in chambers knows that that uh, fifteen bucks pretty much goes to up to the Alberta chambers. So it was also a pretty big membership drive um, to be able to get our businesses understanding the benefits of a business um, member, uh, a business organization and being an advocate as well. Cool, thank you. All right, any other questions? I, I, I don't have a question, but I just had a few things to add to it. Uh, we're fortunate here at Rocky Mountain House to have the same uh, close-knit relationship with the uh, chamber. Uh, we started uh, the passport program uh, three years ago before COVID, and this is our third year, and this year has been amazing uh, with uh, some of the engagement with it. With uh, We had it open to all businesses, whether they're members of the chamber or not. Um, the, the chamber is a ministry, in it, uh, but we found once we got face-to-face uh, -face with a lot of these non-chamber members as well, uh, and explain the benefits of, of the shop local passport program. Um, they got on board. It's grown as, uh, you know, from the <laughs> um, three years ago, we had just over 40 participating businesses. Today, we have over 90 participating businesses. It's incredible with a lot of sponsorship. So we give out, uh, uh, we have a great relationship with the local radio station. We're giving out a uh, $100 uh, chamber bucks each morning um, during the five-week program and then we have the big 1,500 250 all chamber dollars uh, uh, prizes at the end of the campaign which we'll uh, draw for on December 23rd but it's created a real buzz around town it's amazing everybody will get that stamp <laughs> and yeah it's it's awesome um, but it does take time to build and engage and get those uh, businesses uh, in, in involved in, and we found the most success with that was getting face to face with them and educating them the benefits of the whole program. As I'm sure Marie, you have <laughs> to do in, in, in your neighborhood as well. As I don't think we're too much different when it comes to dealing with our entrepreneurs and our, our smaller communities. Yeah, it's, it's pretty exciting. It's good to see other right. companies out there are doing the same <laughs> type of things. Great. Well, if there's, um, you know, feel free if there are any other questions. I just want to take an opportunity to turn it over to uh, Shane uh, now. Um, just uh, for as an organization, I mean, that's supporting local is something we really want to help our economic developers do and you know whether it's through things like this webinar or community app or the magazine that we do trying to encourage people to visit and experience local things. Um, Shane is on our board and he's actually chairing our silent auction this coming up for 2022 and so I, I just wanted to give him some some time to talk about what his vision is for for this because it really fits into the support local and, and hopefully you know in, in you hearing about it you might even have some ideas of businesses that would like to participate so Shane. Yes thanks Leanne uh, so for our silent auction so as many of you may know and I'll just put this link in the chat we are uh, resuming our conference, all things uh, going well here with the, with the pandemic, we'll see, but we are going in person uh, slash hybrid for some of our sessions. So we will have our annual silent auction, which is a big opportunity for us to raise funds for EDA professional development funds. So we were able to do a number of scholarships uh, that help EDA members offset the cost of their course tuition for the community economic development training program. 
So uh, for this year, as many of you that might have been in the conference over the last few years know, we have the Experience Alberta boxes, which showcase local products from around Alberta. They were a huge hit, sent to everybody's houses or places of work. And so building on that theme and building on this talk today by, by, by Marie, we want to really focus on that whole local products, locally handmade items, local artisans as part of this experience. Uh, for our silent auction in uh, in Kananaskis, April 6th to the 8th. Uh, so the whole idea of shop local, uh, we want you to get creative and innovative and develop some baskets or develop uh, some packages perhaps of experiences. You know, it could be golf and dining or art or, um, you know, other aspects related to, uh, you know, pottery or things made in the community that showcase local artisans, for example. Um, so there's a great opportunity to do that and to support local at the same time while helping to advance um, what matters for our members in terms of professional development. So in the chat, there is a, a link that I've included where people can fill in a form uh, and bring their prize package, whether it's a basket or a piece of art or something else, uh, to the conference for those that are attending in person. All businesses who actually provide a donation this year will be featured as well uh, on the EDA website. So that's kind of a, I think that's something new, Nancy, that we haven't done before. So it's a new feature. Not sure if we've done that part, but maybe we have. Um, so um, yeah, so I just wanted to put the word out to get you excited and start thinking about it. In particular, if you have any leftover budget that you wanted to spend in 2021 because you want to save your money for 2022 for other things, now is a good time to do that right before the holiday season. So that was part of the logic on the timing here. Uh, plus it fit really well with the theme of today's talk. Um, you know, in the past, I think we've raised several thousand dollars uh, for our auction. So we're really trying to see if we can meet those goals uh, and exceed it uh, for this year as well. So in closing, of course, small businesses in the community is important. We all know that it's an economic driver in, in Alberta. And so if we can all work together to really showcase our communities to others, and then maybe we'll want to, you know, purchase products from some of our local communities, perhaps go and embark upon tourism in 2022 as we travel around the province and, and visit each other's communities and then experience some of those things that we're able to showcase and market during the silent auction. I'm not sure if Leanne or Nancy have anything they'd like to add as well, but thanks for the opportunity to bring it forward. Yeah, well, and once again, oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, Leanne, before before you had final words, that once again, we'll be sending out an email to everybody with all of the relevant links. Um, Marie, I'll get a copy of the presentation from you. Uh, this webinar will be on our YouTube channel, so you can refer back to the information if you uh, need clarification or anything like that. I think the one really neat thing of the experience boxes, because we heard after some of the vendors that were in there really were relatively new and didn't have huge marketing budgets. And so, you know, to hear from them after and how impactful it was, it's, it's similar to what Marie, you taught you guys experienced, Jeff, in your community. Sometimes it's these little things to us that are huge. And so, you know, if we can get a, a vendor in front of 300, 400 people uh, and have their business card, you know, plucked off the table, why not, you know, support them? So uh, we just wanted to let you know of this opportunity. If you know anyone that would make a good fit, that, that's awesome. So thanks for helping us share that word. Thank you. So um, if there's any other questions, we'll take them. Otherwise, we'll wrap up. And uh, wishing each of you a great safe holiday season. And um, I know we've got, I think we've got one next week, right, Nancy? I think we've got another Wednesday webinar next week. Can't remember. We, we oh yeah, it's do. on our training. It's yeah. on our training program. It's on our training. Yeah. The importance of professional development to economic developers. Yeah, and the range of options out there. So that's that's great. And yeah. you know, Natalie, I think you're, you're on for that one. So. Um, once again, thanks for tuning in uh, for a few minutes today. And I know everybody's busy and uh, hopefully we'll see you next week. If not, certainly in the new year. Okay. Have a good one. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.